Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial for this zippering animation. This effect is inspired by kind of animation which is usually related to my project. And uh, I don't actually know how original animation was made. It can be done manually or procedurally or whatever. But uh, today we're going to do this procedurally. So let's start. So here we're in Blender. Let's go to Noting. As always, we're going to use the preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. Let's just start with a Bezier curve. And I do not like the default curve. So let's select uh, all vertices and delete that. We're going to draw our own curve. So let's just random draw it. Okay, so this is a very bad curve. We will see why. Okay, so let's go to the geometry nodes and let's take a curve points preview which is basically just a curve point, a curve two points node uh, and set that to evaluate it and you can see the vertices are not uniform along the spline uh, some part is related to the resolution uh, but uh, more importantly if you look at the original Bezier curve it actually only has three vertices okay um, but the curvature is determined by all these kind of handles and the Due to certain reasons about how it has been evaluated, the amount of vertices will change. Okay, but this is not a good thing. So we are going to resample curve. And uh, instead of using counts, we I'm going to use the length so that I can have a uniform control the length between all these kind of points along the spline. Next, we are going to split this curve into two. And uh, the way I'm basically going to do is to use the helical connections. I've discussed this uh, node in the past, which is essentially curve to mesh and mesh to curve. Um, okay, so here we controlling uh, the radius to deal with the separation and we can plug a field input, for example, the spline parameter. The spline parameter is basically giving a 0 to 1 value uh, from the start to the end of a curve. So once we plug this spline parameter, what we can actually see is that you have a 0 to 1 separation due to this radius. So what we can do here is by adding a mass function, you can cancel all the separation and you can see it uh, goes to the negative range because of this negative value. So we are going to clamp that. Uh, we clamp and remap that with a map range so we map 0 to 1 okay so now uh, we can animate it so you can see this kind of a separation and we are going to increase the bump of the maximum so you can see this separation is very huge okay uh, I don't think uh, the zipper will be separated too much but uh, for our animation which intends to do a kind of transition you want to have a large size for this kind of frame separation Okay, so this is a basic animation. Next, we are going to create a surface outside this curve. Uh, this is a very interesting topic, but uh, if you're really just uh, doing a zippering animation on a cloth or other things, you probably do not need to worry this. But I think this is an interesting topic when we are doing this transition effect. It's also a little bit tricky to do. So uh, in order to create a surface, from this curve, we basically to extrude the mesh. But you also realize we're working with curve, this is working with mesh, so we need to curve to mesh. Okay. And we plug the mesh in to extrude the mesh, you realize there's no effect. Okay. Uh, one thing I realized is uh, we need to split into two, but this is a triplet, so we change the iteration to two. Okay. And uh, However, we manipulated this offset scale, does not really work because it's working on the face right now. We are working with edge. So now it starts working, but the result is not ideal. This is uh, uh, due to several reasons. We are going to deal with that one by one. First, we are going to invert a normal of uh, one uh, curve. If you hover your mouse into the offset, you will realize it's by default using normal. Uh, that's why they are extruding the direction of normal. But uh, we want uh, this two curve to extrude at a different direction. So the second curve should go outside. 
Okay. Uh, by doing that, we need to do a kind of a switch. So we have a normal and we need to do a switch. So switch true or false. Uh, one is positive, the other should be negative. So this is the switch. But uh, what kind of parameter we should put into this switch? We're going to distinguish whether this curve is the first or the second curve. Okay. And uh, in computer graphing, we have an index. And the uh, index always starts from zero in computer or programming. So this is zero, this is one. So we can directly plot this uh, into index because zero is false, one is true. And if we directly plug that into offsets, uh, there's no much improvement. The reason uh, is that uh, we were discussing about uh, the index of a curve, but uh, once we do this curve to match, there is no curve. Uh, we can obviously change some other methods, but uh, what I'm going to do is to capture attributes when it's still a curve. So we capture a vector. So capture a vector and replace the linkage. So this is one part, you can see it becomes more uniform. And we're going to capture again about the index, which is an integer. And we're going to capture the spline index and plug that into switch. So now you can see uh, it starts work. And uh, since everything is controlled again by this remap zero to one, you can see this effect of a zippering. Okay. Uh, if you want to enlarge the surface, then you can take another scale to enlarge that. But now, you also realize that there will be some intersection because every point is extruding on their own normal. So sometimes when they intersect, the computer gets a little bit confused um, how to deal with this geometry, so finally you end up with this kind of z fighting uh, weird artifact. Okay. To resolve that, it's very easy. Uh, you just give a kind of a uniform the normal instead of every point giving a different normal. So to average all the normal out, we basically just use the spline domain so that they are choosing the average normal for this spline to extrude and you can use that scale to control the size. Okay. And uh, now you can actually get with a camera and uh, try to move your camera and increase the spline, uh, length, and the uh, size of whatever stuff to make this animation. But uh, this is zippering, so we also need to deal with the units onto that in addition to the surface. Before we actually create a unit, I'm going to uh, the beginning of the node tree to put a length into the group input and put this add value to the group input so that I can control uh, the amount of points using this length procedurally in the modifier panel and uh, the, to animate this setup in the modifier panel so that I do not need to go back and forth in the node tree. And uh, within this node tree, Previously, we've already made this surface. We can select all the nodes and the control J to frame it. And then we look at our curved points being generated earlier. We can use these points to instance a cube. So we point instance a cube. And now you can see this cube do not have its alignment towards the spline. Let's take a combine XYZ to change the dimension so that we can make it more like kind of a zippering function. So now you can see they do not have the alignment. So we can take align, alignment on spline, which is basically just align ruler to vector two times with the normal and the curve tangent. Okay. I've discussed this in the past. So let's plug that into the rotation. Uh, we can disable this curve points preview because we no longer needed that. And we can change the dimension a little bit. So the Z, you can realize that Z should be uh, about the interval of this length. 
so that they are separated together. Right now, there is one problem that if you decrease the value, you can see all these kind of points are just colliding with each other. So basically, what we need to do is to select uh, or delete uh, every second point. This kind of concept is called the index mask for. Okay, and we plug that into the selection. Uh, this index mask uh, for is basically a math function with modulo at uh, two. Okay, and uh, if you plug this index. So originally the index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But uh, every time it reaches 2, it will become 0. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And as I mentioned just uh, like before, when we are using this index as a mode of a switch, this time is the same, that we select every 1 or select every 0 uh, finally, we resolve this kind of a pattern and that they no longer intersect uh, with each other with this value. Okay, but this method contains a kind of problem. Currently, we're working with this interval of 0 0.9. So everything works automatically good uh, with this index mask forth. However, if we go back to 0 0.86, then you realize they start to overlap again, even with this index mask forth. The reason is associated with the amount of points we created for every curve. So uh, let's think about that. We start from zero and one, two, three. And finally, if we reach an odd number, uh, maybe this is 18, this is 19, okay? And we delete every other point, like delete 1, 3, and finally delete 19. And finally, we start again in the second curve as an index of 20, uh, which is equivalent to 0. And then we 1, 2, 3. Then we realize we start to delete 1 again. So we delete the single row with this final odd number created in the spline. Okay, that's why it happens. Alternatively, if this is 20, then it starts at 1. So if we delete other points, it's not the same, it's not the same row. Knowing the reason of this issue, we can make this entire setup more procedural. So let's go back at the beginning, in which we have this domain size. And uh, we can know the total point count of our curves. And we are going to distinguish whether this point count is an uh, odd number or even number. And uh, previously, we've already discussed the functionality of modulo. And uh, we are basically use the same principle so that uh, every time this point count is an even number, then it output zero. Every time it's an odd number, it outputs one. Okay, so we can take an equal. If it equals to zero, then it's an odd number. And then we are going to take a switch. Switch off an integer to offset or alternate the point that we delete. So if you take this offset, then you can see the alternating the points. If we directly plug this switch into the offset and we plot the true to be one, then you realize it's not a helping anything. The reason is that we're only inputting a single constant so that if I offset, everything will be offset. So here I'm going to offset just a uh, single spline. So we take a spline info node, uh, which is outputting the spline index. So for example, this is the zero, this is one, we plug this spline index so now everything works. Uh, this is spline info essentially is the index to interpolate the domain, interpolate domain at uh, this spline domain. Okay, this is very similar to the capture attributes that we done earlier. The only difference, uh, or the only reason why I use capture attribute here instead of interpolate domain, is that the 
In this step, the curve is too much, so we no longer have this spline domain in a mesh object. Okay, so this is the difference. Okay. However, uh, if you change the length, you will still realize they are colliding to each other. The reason is that uh, actually this functionality is always outputting true. The reason is that uh, even for a single curve, it's outputting an odd number, but if you plus the second curve, it's always a even number. So instead of using the domain size to count both spline, we're going to use the spline length into the module and we delete the domain size. So that uh, no matter how you change the lens, they will never collide to each other ever again. So now we can finalize the relationship between our interval and uh, this cube size. We plug that into Z. So when we increase the lens, uh, the zippering unit will, always, uh, will also increase its size. Uh, if you are not using this simple cube as uh, the zippering unit, you can plug that into the scale of your instance. Uh, it's basically working the same. So, basically this is the idea. The rest uh, is uh, just uh, controlling and animating this animation. Let's take a join geometry to join back our surface. and. Uh, Talk about the parameters we've already discussed already, like uh, we have this lens and we have this value to control or animate it. Of course, you can see there will be some flaws when it opens too wide up. This is simply because the curvature of this curve uh, is making some uh, units colliding with each other or even z fighting weird rotation. But there is uh, no real good way to resolve that, in my opinion or at least I don't want to go too much deep uh, to resolve the problem. Uh, the best way to resolve that is just to draw another curve. If it's a straight line, you will never have this kind of problem anyway. Okay, uh, another important thing is uh, the, everything being shown in the tutorial is just an example. You don't necessarily always follow exactly the same. For example, right now I'm using this spline parameter, but you can be more creative. Uh, right now, this is a single way of uh, zippering, but uh, you will also realize sometimes in the real life, it's double way zippering. So what you can do is you add uh, just a proximity for uh, which is the equivalent that you are creating a, a sphere in the middle to center is one, the outside is zero. So something like that. So you increase the scale. So you can see it opens up from middle. And of course you can use uh, uh, this empty to control the sides so that you increase, decrease, and you can fall for animation to open that up. There are many different ways to play around. It looks like a mouse now. But anyway, okay. So basically this is the idea. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.